Nacia Lenny, aka Blazed and Glazed. You've definitely seen her on TikTok. We have. We're so excited to have you. Hello. I've never been more excited. <laughs> this is a moment. <laughs> and you know what? She is truly amazing. I love her energy. I love everything about what she's doing. Weirdly, we have the same book agent, a little synchronicity. So this is pretty good. We both yeah. like manifested Gila into our lives, truly. Yeah. No, when you were telling me that, like the universe set this up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, tell us a little bit about how you started the TikTok, the thrifting, the all of it. <laughs> yeah. So I live in Los Angeles now, but I'm originally from Dayton, Ohio. A lot of nothing. And I've been thrifting for as long as I've been into fashion. I grew up raised by a single mom and with not a lot of money, like the thrift store, especially in high school, when I was really falling in love with fashion, Juicy being one of the most iconic brands in my life at the time, obviously couldn't afford it and would go thrifting with the inspo in mind for it. Um, even if I wasn't going to like find that exact piece, like I always had like kind of that like mood board in my mind of these more expensive brands that I saw all of the girls like Paris Hilton wearing and Britney Spears wearing and on the hills in Laguna Beach, like I would go to the thrift store and just try to recreate that vibe for myself and like capture that moment for myself. And that's just like really where I fell into my personal style, like just literally going through every rack at like the down and dirty thrift store right by my mom's house. And I was just able to like I would go on Wednesdays every single day in high school, family day where the whole store was 50 percent off. And I would just come <laughs> home at this time. Obviously, sustainability was like less on my brain. Mm -hmm. And it was just like how Necessity. much hot, gorgeous shit can I get and fill up in this trash bag and, you know, bring home with me, go down to the laundry room and I would just like play dress up for hours. I actually started my like first YouTube channel ever, Fashion Outsider 09, very much so like when we, you know, weren't sure if we could put like our real names on the internet, right. like if that was safe or not. <laughs> Amazing. And I would go and I would play dress up and the thrift store just gave me permission to dress up, permission to be myself. I was dealing with kind of a lot of like childhood trauma and I was diagnosed with depression and anxiety when I was six years old and getting to go. The thrift store was like my safe space. It was my happy space. It made me, yeah, gave me permission to be myself and to play with clothes at a time when, yeah, thrifting was not very cool. Most of the girls at my high school, like, would literally, if they knew my clothes were from the thrift store, as hot and chic as they were, they would be like, oh, so smelly, so gross, like, from the thrift store. You were just ahead of and your time. I was so ahead of my time, but I knew in my gut that it was, like, a superpower uh, that I had within me when I went to Teen Vogue Fashion University, the first ever that they did in 2010. I remember flipping through my Teen Vogues because my Teen Vogues and my nylons covered my walls in my basement room growing up. Same. They were my inspo. You know how we would just like collage? Like, yeah, my Pinterest? entire wall was just a giant collage of wallpaper. A hundred percent. And I remember flipping through it and flipping to the back and I was always just looking for something. And the internet was the first thing I found that like led me out of Ohio and into like what people in LA are doing and people in New York are doing, girls all over the world in London and Paris. And when I found Teen Vogue Fashion University, this opportunity in the back of the magazine to all you have to do is write an essay, got it, do a photo shoot. My little sister and I literally set up a white sheet in our basement at our mom's house and we literally just styled thrifted vines. That's and amazing. when that got me into it and we got to go and go to seminars from Zach Posen and Anna Wintour and Amy Astley, the editor-in-chief at the time, and visit the Teen Vogue offices, it was crazy and like I was telling them earlier, the first like event of that was at the Juicy Store in New York. They gave us like a hundred dollar credit to shop. It was literally one of the best moments of my life. There was a step and repeat. I was like, there's literally, I will send you guys the photo of me Please. in the jacket on the step and repeat with the Teen Vogue logo behind me in my Oxford shoes, like a whole 2010 getup. And it really, like I remember being on the plane back to Ohio being like, I just want to tell stories. I want to tell stories through fashion. I just want to make people happy the way that entertainment and fashion has made me happy in like some of my darkest times. And then I, you know, really, really fast forward. Like I went to college for fashion merchandising. I always knew in the back of my mind, like I'm going to make TV shows. I want to be on camera. I just want to be me. Like for I'm a, a star. Living. Yeah. I'm a star. Like I'm doing this, but I went to college. And then right after I moved to LA, literally me and my boyfriend of the past 12 years now, I think. We met our freshman year of college. We packed up our car, no jobs, no family, no apartment, lived in an Airbnb for a month. And I was kind of doing my YouTube channel, like taking people around 
to thrift stores and stuff, but I wasn't really finding my audience. And when 2020 hit, pandemic, like everyone was getting on TikTok. My boyfriend was like, you need to make your thrifting videos on TikTok. And because I was like, okay, what are people doing? Just you were dancing? one of the first TikTok creators that it, I followed for I sure. I felt like I was like the first person that was making the kind of thrifting content the way I was, where for me, it's like not about the clothes, it's about the people and the stories. So I felt like I could like grab a trash bag and like make people think it was amazing if I had a voiceover that narrated it to be so. And I get so excited by thrift finds, secondhand finds. I get so excited by people who use clothing as a vessel for storytelling, which is my favorite thing to do. And when I started my TikTok, like, honestly, it really blew up like my whole life. Honestly, I was making estate sale videos around L.A., thrifting, really just sharing myself wholeheartedly. I'd never you know, I think I was 27. I'm 30 now. And I couldn't have done all of this when I was 16. You know, I needed like to really get comfortable with my sense yeah. of self um, and who I am as a person before I could like project that to like a whole like younger generation and older. I mean, like my TikTok audience skews young, but my YouTube audience is like all women my mom's age and older that are just like I see so much of myself when you are I would never wear this but you make me feel confident to wear the stuff that does make me excited so it really just started from there and has I mean TikTok completely changed my life we like, love completely TikTok. it introduced me to like this audience that had no idea what thrifting was no idea what estate sales were really were hungry to be more sustainable and ethical but obviously a lot of sustainable and ethical brands are really expensive they're not the most size inclusive. And they're also, I feel like people really like correlate the word sustainable fashion with like bland, like yeah. really bland clothing. And for me, it's not that. And that's how I get to be more sustainable in my shopping is through the secondhand universe because I just don't relate to a lot of sustainable brands as much. And a lot of my audience can't afford it or they yeah. can't fit in it. But that's totally. the thrift store is for everyone there's no like photos like when you walk into a store in the mall like telling you this is who our person is this is who's supposed to dress here only girls only boys dress like this look like this be this body type like the thrift store is like go anywhere you want explore and you know experiment with whatever you want it's a whole world of it's a whole world and i literally could talk about it all day <laughs> no honestly same i feel really passionately about thrifting because i feel like it's the same i think the girls that get it, get it. Like, 100%. Some people just love the hunt. Like, yeah. I feel like we all like love the hunt of like vintage thrifting. But I find with a lot of my friends, they're like not as like, they don't love the hunt as much. They get really overwhelmed in thrift yeah. stores because it, I, I get it. It is overwhelming. And it Especially like be. a real ass thrift store, which is exactly. like my place. I love a curated Me moment. Too. They are great, especially to get inspiration and to maybe grab a piece you've been wanting for a long time. But the like vast thrift store, I just went into one recently with the CBS Evening News following me around the thrift store. And the girl that was a reporter had never been thrifting in her life. <laughs> and she was like, this is crazy. And we found a pair of Prada pumps for oh my $30 God. while we were there. And she was like, oh, Okay, I need to go to yeah, the thrift like, store. I love that you're opening people's eyes up to making it a little bit more accessible. Cause I feel like it's like a lot of my friends, like they're shopping Shein and Zara and fast fashion. And like, I, I really, it's like, like my only like mission of like saving the planet. I feel like it's something, the small things that I can do yeah. is to shop more sustainably, shop small brands, thrift, whatever. Um, but I think it comes down to like a lot of girls our age and like, you know, we're working, we don't have a lot of money to spend on like crazy clothes. Trends go by so quickly that it's like, it's easy to fall into like the Shein trap, the Zara trap, the fast fashion trap. So I'm wondering from you if you have any tips to help like girls like that, that like yeah. feel a little bit overwhelmed by thrifting, but like want to be more sustainable, but just like they don't feel like they can or they don't know where to start. Yeah, I absolutely do. It's like my favorite thing to do is convert people into thrift queens. Uh, I mean, first of all, like for me, especially like it's great for the planet, but if the planet doesn't do it for you, let like the people who are making these clothes and like sweatshops exactly. do it for you. Because for me, my like full on divorce with fast fashion mm -hmm. was just like when I really, really realized like that these women are like, here in LA in, you know, across the cut, like across, what am I trying to say? Um, across the sea, on the other <laughs> side of the pond. Like, in China and they, India yeah, and wherever they, they're making our clothes. Yeah, they are being kept in poverty by not being paid a living wage. It's the kind of thing, like in the kind of job, you know, we wouldn't want for ourselves. We wouldn't mm -hmm. for, for our mom, our sister, our grandma, our grandpa. We wouldn't want them working in those conditions. We wouldn't want them being paid below a living wage, but we're okay with the people that make the clothes that we claim to love so much as like fashion girls, we're okay with that. And to me, that's like a blind spot that I feel like we can't claim ignorance to anymore because obviously when we were growing up, there wasn't as much media being pushed in our face of like, mm -hmm. this is what's happening in a sweatshop. This is how your clothing is being made. This is how much it should cost. Now, like that's all out there. So yeah. I think that 
that's a huge thing for me is like, first of all, just really thinking about like the human beings that are behind the clothing that these fast fashion brands are making yeah. because it's really dirty and it's really sad. And it's like I said, we fight for wages for ourselves and for the people we love the most. So like, I think it's crazy that there's such a disconnect especially with fashion influencers who make like Shein hauls and massive fast fashion hauls. The disconnect it's of being like, wild. fashion is my job. I love fashion. It's like, but, but how are we so disconnected from the yeah. people that make those clothes that we say we love so much? Yeah. It, and it's important to note too, like I think working at Pam and Gila when I first started working in fashion, it, I had no idea how clothes were made. And a lot so of people working, don't. Yeah. And so working at a company, it's like, it's not every, you know, if your clothes are made in China, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're made at a no. sweatshop. There are ethical, you know, yeah, a lot, a lot of people don't realize, and this is like a long, long time ago, um, that when you when you sell to a big chain, you have mm -hmm. to sign something that says that you are manufacturing in a factory that is ethical, that treats their people right. You have to sign something like that or they can sue you for it. So not every factory there is like that, even mm -hmm. though we started making in Los Angeles, but there were a ton of sweatshops in Los Angeles yeah. too. Yeah. Really depressing. And you know, back to your comment about sustainable fashion in a major brand, a lot of it, honestly, it's just kind of, it's kind of bullshit. It's, no, it's like greenwashing. They, exactly. Yeah, it is. they yeah. just kind of take a phrase and it's like, oh, so it's made here. So that means it's sustainable. It's not really. They're just trying to jump on a bandwagon that they think is yeah. going to sell more clothes. Not all of it is. It, it, a lot of it's it really is. It's also such a buzzword it's nowadays. It's buzzword. Yeah. Yeah. That's and what I was going to say. It, it, it can mean so many things because it's like, okay, cool. Like you're using reusable packaging, but like on the other end, like there's like something else that you're doing that's not sustainable. It's like you can't yeah. be perfect. I appreciate that people are trying. I appreciate <laughs> people trying. I just like really like the idea. I worked with Moschino recently, which was crazy because it was like the first super high end brand to work with me and let me like pull pieces, vintage pieces from them and really like introduce my audience to them, but through like a vintage lens. And I worked with Coach actually on their like Coach Reloved collection where they like recycle bags. And that has been so incredible to see brands making like actually real tangible steps, not just with making more clothes that are made a little bit more sustainable sustainably, mm -hmm. but using old things and continuing their lifespan and like updating them to be chic and to be cool because it shows other brands that you can do that. Um, but back to what you were saying, like <laughs> that is just like one of my first tips though is because I know sadly, like as much as we like love the planet and need it to survive, sometimes like that just doesn't do it for everyone. Sometimes people yeah. just honestly, like they're like, oh, the planet, like I, it doesn't, it doesn't so always like, oh, like I recycle. spring the passion <laughs> in someone. So I think really connecting like human beings to our clothing Absolutely. is really, really important. But then also like my biggest tip for people just getting into thrifting is, especially if they get overwhelmed by like a big thrift store, online thrifting is great. Virtual thrifting is great. And one of the biggest things you can do is like go into your closet, find the brands that you like, like look at the tags of the clothing that fits you well and that you really resonate with. And even if it's a fast fashion brand, yeah, totally. because those are all over the secondhand marketplace, I, obviously. I was, I was just saying that. Like, I still have like Zara and Shein and like those kind of brands in my closet, but like, exactly. I buy them at Crossroads or Buffalo exactly, Exchange. Because or then at least you're like continuing the lifespan. So I think putting those brands like into eBay or into Etsy or Poshmark or Depop or whatnot and looking up those brands and kind of starting there is a really good way to like tip your toe in because you're kind of like still getting the same clothing that you're used to. It's not like, oh, like a grandma, like th frock from the thrift store that like, I might not know how to style for mm -hmm. myself yet. Um, it's like your clothing that you're used to wearing, but you're getting it in a circular way. So I think that's like a really good first step for people who get overwhelmed by the a thrift store. Frock. Something of mine. Maybe. No, something, <laughs> something that I would love to wear. Uh, but like, I feel like that's what a lot of people think is just at the thrift store when really there's like just a ton of like ready to wear fast fashion, like all of that stuff too. And that excites me a little less. But I think if you're just getting into it, mm -hmm. it it's really nice to still be able to get the pieces you're used to buying on like Revolve or like whatever these sites are that people are shopping and you can get that in the secondhand marketplace you can get it for cheaper and you can get it super gently worn because especially like a ton of influencers that are doing all these hauls like they recycle them back to the thrift store right away exactly. they re-gift them they yeah. sell them on their deep yeah. box right or away or they'll do like garage sales yeah like, exactly I mean, so LA, you can find good. it all and i feel like that's a great way to start but i also think like if you're intrigued, like go into a big thrift store. My favorite are in the Valley. If you're here in LA, if yes. you want a real thrift yes. store, I used I to live in Sherman girl. Oaks before I moved back over Sherman here. <laughs> I lived there for a year and I just moved back over to Beverly Hills and I am always getting my ass back Schlepp to the Valley to for the valley. thrifting. You gotta go deep. Super thrift, Valley Value Center, those places. Go in and play around. Take your Pinterest board in and like really just like 
go through everything or just start in the bag, start in the shoes. When I go into the thrift store, I like to start in the most visible sections, like the bags and the shoes and the jackets, where if there's an amazing item, like someone's going to pull it first, go to those places first, see what you like, and then dive into the racks and just go through everything and try it out. Bring it home, see what fits and what doesn't. Like donate it back into the universe when mm-hmm. you're done with it. Give it to a friend, give it to your family. Like it's really the best way to play with, especially like the micro trends up the butt that are like popping up on TikTok every five seconds. They all all live in the thrift store. Everything's there. Yeah, literally <laughs> everything. It really is a wonderland, but I, okay, I hold get on. it that, that was amazing. Oh, <laughs> that was really incredible, especially for someone who didn't grow up in that kind of world, even though I've been thrifting for a long time. But, you know, just the whole idea of everything right now that you're talking about that's going on that you're talking about is just, it's incredible. That was excellent. <laughs> just a little side tangent. Yeah. Um, okay. I want to talk also about Y2K. I feel like you were like the queen of the I Y2K trend. So you got so many good Well, pieces. she's the queen of Y2K. That's true. <laughs> she, she, she walked so we could run. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I want to know, like, what? why do you think Y2K is coming back so much? And why do you love it so much? So I love it so much because of the permission it gave everyone to play. I think in that time, people weren't just like wearing outfits to post them on Instagram, obviously. Instagram didn't exist. I think people were just wearing shit that made them really happy and excited. And that to me, I feel like is like a nostalgic energy that like, especially Gen Z right now is like craving, like with being having access to like all of these digital images of the paparazzi shots of girls in juicy tracksuits in Ed Hardy, in Von Dutch, in all of these iconic brands, like they have access to them now. And I feel like when we were growing up, it's like we had to see it in a magazine to get inspired by it, but they have it at their fingertips. And with like TikTok and Instagram and more people talking about these brands in this time, I feel like everyone's just getting really excited about a time, yeah, where we weren't posting, we weren't wearing outfits to post. Like we were just wearing outfits that totally. made you happy and excited. And I think that excites a lot of people because it, it, I think it really gives you permission to be yourself and even if that's not exactly what you're gonna wear maybe you can have like a little like y2k flair in there and i just think it's so fantastic it's a happy time it's a happy time of dressing it's a i've always felt like i'm i mean that's why my original screen say my original screen name was fashion outsider 09 was because i always felt like such a fashion outsider being a thrift girl being in the thrift world it's been really crazy for me to see that become cool and Mm -hmm. that become like a center of fashion where brands really want to be like how do we get into this thrift market How do we get it to the vintage girls? How do we get to them? It's been interesting to watch because fashion is so serious and has been so serious for so long. And I just never resonated with that. I think it's why brands like Juicy spoke to me so much, like the unseriousness of it, because at the end of the day, we're just having fun and we don't have to have our noses up at everything um, that we don't think is perfect or cool or whatever. And I think the that time period, Y2K, just like gave people that permission. And it's a lot of glitter and it's a lot of fun. And it's like short skirts and like thongs peeking out. And it's just like breaking all the fashion rules that shouldn't exist in the first place. And that's like been my Bible my whole life. So like to see that, like I will just like talk about it all day because it's so fun. And then you can, you know, like I love 80s fashion, 80s music is my favorite. Like it's all I listen to Mm -hmm. 24 seven is music Mm -hmm. from the 80s. And I love kind of infusing that into my wardrobe as well and the 90s. And I feel like at the end of the day, like, why is UK it's just the happy? Like, it's just so happy. Yeah. I, it's just I exciting. Agree. It's just fun. Thank you for that. <laughs> You're welcome. Yes. Yeah, it was happy. It was fun and it was happy. And it just brought, it brought, I think it brought groups of girls together too because yeah. everybody was wearing it them the together. It is the year of the girl right yeah. now yeah. too. I'm it is the, it. I love that. Well, and it being like such a vibe and like Mean Girls and like all these like girly, girly movies that brought us all out to the theater, the shows like Laguna Beach and all that, Legally Blonde, like everything that brought women together and was like made for women, like juicy, juicy energy just pumping yes. through that. Yes. It was the quintessential girly brand. Yeah. It was girly, girly. And it was great. Pink. I mean, that's supposedly, I think pink is it, it baby girl's first color that they are attracted to is pink, which I love. I mean, I relate to that completely. (laughs) Yeah. And like I grew up, you know, in a fully female household with just me and my mom and my sister. So it was just that kind of energy all the time. So I think that like Juicy especially just spoke to us so much because it was like a connection we could have with our mom of like, this is like cute, curly stuff, like made for us and marketed to us. And like, it just, I don't know, 
It was fantastic. And it was the, it was one of the first brands. I mean, now everybody talks about girl bosses. We were two girls that started a brand with no clue what we were doing, with no financing, with no business. I mean, our business plan that we wrote was hysterical. It was like confidential, do not open. It was like, what's the point? But <laughs> I every, want that on a notebook. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, every, everything we did, we, we just did it because we thought it was funny, but we didn't really know what we were doing other than we were doing what we liked and what we wanted. And we knew certain things made you feel really good or powerful or happy or sexy or whatever it was. And it was definitely girl power 100% all the way. It was. You can feel the authenticity of that that like pulses through. I feel like when you talk about that, that's like how I feel about everything that I'm doing now, like was everything that people like turned their noses up at and thought was so uncool and could never happen. And the amount of people that told me like, this is just not a thing, like this is gross, like no, 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 are the same people that now are like trying to like cling on to the yeah. trend for dear life. And funny? I feel like when you just do something that's so authentically you and that just is like coming from the heart, which you can tell Juicy came from the heart, it's gonna work. Like it's going to work because other people feel that energy. I also think it's kind of a good sign when people start telling you no. I yeah, feel like that's kind of means it that you're on to something, right? Yeah. <laughs> we were in the warehouse one time and doing an interview with, I think it was CNN. And the guy says to me in the, in the warehouse, you know, so what do real designers think of you? And I was like, uh, excuse me. And then right then Anna Winter calls to invite us to the couture. I was like, well, we're going to Paris to the who's, couture. Who's the we'll real find designer out. now? And they were all like, all of them, Valentino, they were obsessed with, because we were the opposite of couture. Yeah. It took 80 hours to make one dress and we were making 80,000 tracksuits in an hour. It was like just 100% the opposite, but they were obsessed with the volume of it. We made tracksuits for all of them with their names embroidered on it, their nicknames and things. But it's just, you know, you're right. When you do something new or the way you talk about your childhood, and definitely there were a lot of people that looked at Juicy and were like, you know, you're killing fashion. Yeah. You're the killers of fashion, which, you know, was like, oh, well, bummer. Sorry. You know, yeah, it just, you have to just, if it's authentic, and I say that to anyone that starts a business or has an idea, if it's really authentic and you really feel it and believe it, you have to go for it. You have to try it. You have to go with your passion and just see what happens. What's happening with you is amazing and it's incredible, but it's very authentic. And I love yeah. that it's so happy. It makes it's like the thing that made me so happy. Like, like I said, at like some of the least happy times of my life, like I clung to clothing and like movies and TV. And that's where I get so much of my inspiration from is just like old movies and TV shows and music and like magazines, like physical mm -hmm. magazines do everything for me. Nylon and Teen Vogue were the Bible. Everything. <laughs> everything. <laughs> And then obviously when Rookie Mag became yeah, a thing, I yeah. was all over that. All over it. Oh my God, I lived on Tavi's blog. I lived on it. Yes. And I was just like in my own little world because that was What like, was her blog name? It was Style Rookie. Style Rookie, yes, yeah. Yes. And on then blog the Style Rookie turned into a Rookie Mag, yes. Style Rookie, Fashion Toast, I so remember. So good. Yeah. And I remember how mad the fashion industry was. Like you were saying in your TikTok yes. the other day at her sitting front row and doing all these things. Just like and tiny I little gray hair child. will never forget her with her massive bow on her head and her tiny little body. And I was just like, that is my like queen. like she is so cool <laughs> i was obsessed i was like we would be best friends like why don't we go to the same high school i'm moving to chicago <laughs> exactly okay so where did the name blazed and glazed come from yeah so i when i made my youtube channel blazed and glazed came before the tiktok i first just wanted it to not just be my name because i wanted it to feel like a community i felt like a lot of the fashion content on YouTube I was seeing at the time was very like, dress like me, be like me, lose weight to look like me, and then you'll be cool. And I really wanted people to like, look, come to my platform, especially because it was thrift based. It's like, you can't buy the same exact thing. Like maybe you can find it in the secondhand marketplace, but I don't have a link for you to like click and buy. I wanted it to feel very like, this is for everyone. So I didn't want it to just be like the Macy Eleni show, even though like it was most of the time. I wanted it to be blazed and glazed. And honestly, I was walking around, well, I'm, like quite like a Sony Baloney pothead. Um, I, you know, have always smoked a little bit, a lot of, a little bit, a lot of weed. We can relate to that. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, a lot of bit of weed. And people are like usually surprised by that because I think people have like a negative connotation, obviously with like a pothead of like, you don't do anything. But like I have endometriosis. Literally, it's the only thing that helps with it. My anxiety too. Um, so that's where the blaze comes from. But also like- Oh my God, blazing, blazing. Yes. I totally get it. Yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. I was like, we can relate yeah. to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just like my vibe. So like, but also like, you know, we're trailblazing. That's my more yes, PG yes. answer maybe. But uh, no, it's very much because I love weed. And glazed, like I don't wear makeup. I love skincare. And like I... Stopped wearing you makeup. Great skin. Oh yeah, thank you. You. Look, you. You have a great. Oh my god, no I'm probably look. like sweating with redness right now because we were like filming <laughs> and everything. Glazed. But I honestly was just like walking around um, when I was starting my YouTube channel, my old apartment complex, and I was just like had my phone camera out on my phone, and I was like, oh my god, I look like a glazed donut. And my boyfriend was like, glazed, <laughs> that's good. And I was like, what rhymes with glazed? And I was like, well, blazed, obviously, like of course. So I then love it just that. kind of like I was just like, no, I'm going with this. Yeah. Blazed and glazed is a vibe. Um, it's just like kind of like an essence. You of, were before it, the it, Hailey Bieber blazed and glazed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay, Miss Glazed Donut, like okay, but Amazing. like I love it, and I it was such a big part of my. I've been an eating disorder recovery for the past like six years or so at this point and a huge like step in that was me kind of getting comfortable not wearing makeup and like because I felt like I love when people play with makeup and the artistry of makeup and the confidence it can bring but for me it was like really in a negative place where like I was like I can't leave the house unless I have this much foundation on my face and I just really wanted to like push myself to feel like good in my own skin and to feel like okay with that and so for me, like just making sure my skin is glazed, we're always doing face masks. It's just, it's the vibe. Yeah, I'm going to need the skincare routine. Yeah, it's the truly. vibe. <laughs> That's so, it's so cool though, because you're talking about like all of these adverse things that have happened to you are part of your story, which is really great messaging for everybody that's following you. And it's incredibly encouraging that, you know, you find all of that through thrifting and through yeah. fashion and clothes, which definitely changes the way you feel. I mean, I'm a makeup junkie, a hundred percent product, yeah. everything. I, I just love it. But you know, I, I get that. I, I get how that could make you feel negative as well as positive. And yeah. it's really good to hear you say that. And I'm sure a lot of people that are listening to you really really get a lot from you being very honest about all of that and how yeah. thrifting and clothing has really changed the way you and look what you're doing now it's changed I mean, the way i so see life cool. like i truly was like i mean one of the number one comments i get is like you're so positive how can i be positive like you and i'm like i am a naturally very negative person i lived most of my life very glass half empty, very like, woe is me. Like, why are all these bad things happening to me? Why has all of these things in my life happened to me? Why have I experienced these things? And when I like had a moment and it took a really long time into like my mid twenties of when I like really was like, I can't let the things other people have done to me or those situations like decide if and dictate if I get to be happy, if I get to live a happy life. Like I used to look at positive people, especially in my teen years and be like, cool for you, not for me, like cringe. Like I, I can't, I don't know, but I feel like I was just holding myself back so much. I was like, I feel like I just didn't really, I just wasn't comfortable with myself. And so much through my recovery, like I just really fell in love with myself. And it's like the person that's always been inside of me, that like little girl that was like so obsessed with like creativity and sharing things. And it brings me so much joy just like getting to be myself. And even if it brings a lot of hate comments sometimes, because even the no makeup thing like really riles people up. They're like, so how crazy. do you come on camera? People just don't think women should like be allowed to like come on camera or be professional or do anything without a full face of makeup on. And I just think that's bullshit. I just think everyone should just do literally whatever the hell they want and what makes them feel comfortable and what makes them feel like themselves. And these things, I mean, they've just helped me so much. And I've always felt like, Growing up, I would have loved to have like an it girl I looked up to or like someone like talking about like, I have depression, but like, look at my life. Like, I'm happy. Like, yeah, I, I am so a happy positive. person. Like, I, I feel like that would have been so powerful for me. And the second I started really opening up about my mental health online, which to me is just as important as the fashion stuff that I share, but it's also connected as well. It's just like, I can never stop because of the amount of girls that have reached out to me just being like, I had no idea. Like, I could you know, be diagnosed with depression, but also just be a happy, sparkly person. And like, that's who I do feel like I am, but I have this thing. And like, just that so you can still be working on yourself, but still celebrating yourself at the same time. It's, and it's so important. Yeah. I think I say this all the time. It's so important to like see 
like see it with your own two, two eyes. Yeah. Like I think like surrounding yourself with like the things that you want and aspire to and like having people online like you that are like sharing. It's important to see that it's possible because when you're in like a dark place or whatever, like feels- if you can see that other people are struggling the same way as you and you like you're like, OK, they did it. I can do it. Like, it feels it's so impossible. I mean, when I'm in like the biggest depression holes ever, like it feels impossible to climb out of. And I but I always cling to that. Like, I know I will get back to myself and there's nothing more that I love than just being myself but me at like 17 18 19 years old like would have never said that like i wanted to be anyone but me growing up like i looked at all of these other people and were like i want everything else but myself and that was a lot of you know words from other people and like i have a really like negative relationship with my dad but i always had my mom really building me and my sister up and i'm so grateful for that and so grateful for her um because she i mean i wouldn't have anything without her giving up her whole life to raise us and she always like, I mean, she was, has always been so positive. And even growing up, I remember being like embarrassed of that. Sometimes I'd be like, mom, you're just so talkative to everyone everywhere. And I just feel like I'm literally her now, Yeah, we're all, yeah. but it's the best. Yeah. yeah, I do that all the time. I'm like, oh my God, I am my mom. <laughs> but she just knew like, because she was just older and like new. And I just feel like as women get older, we get so much better. And that was something like I never really like understood before. And that I want to scream at the girls on TikTok that are like, how are you 30 years old? I thought you were so young. I'm like, 30 is so young. young. Like, it's okay. Like, we can still do whatever we want. It's still fine. Especially in LA, it's like fed to us that like as soon as you turn like 24, you're expired. You're expired. It's insane. <laughs> like, I mean, I grew up acting and like in that kind of world. Yeah. And I, being able to like, you're, you're always trying to look younger. Like even when I was 16, I was trying to look 13. Like yeah. it was, you're always trying to like, just be as young as possible and it's so stressful but luckily especially in like entertainment okay i'm not making comment here i'm saying nothing to this ridiculous conversation okay we are not going i'm saying it is ridiculous and the the (laughs) pressure is like so crazy it really is and now being out of that world and like looking in i'm like whoa like that is such a bubble no it's just but the younger a lot of the girls like i've just seen it in my comments like i'm just like floored by them being like you're 30 whoa well, that's whoa why I think so and i'm like i'm like yeah i like, think it's so yes. important that you're on instagram and you're like you're like taking pictures being glam like just living your best life yeah. like it's important to see it to see it with your own two eyes that people do it it's possible. especially these girls that are being conditioned to really think that you have to be this age you act this certain way this age you dress this certain age like this is when you do this like i get comments from women they're like i could never wear that because i'm like in my 40s and i'm like oh my god no please just wear do what it. makes you happy that that's amazing but that that kind of thing has been going on for like ever ever like they say that women in i mean i don't know if this is they say or they said but women at their peak whatever they thought their peak was in high school that's the makeup and the way they dress and they're stuck in that time warp and they don't get out of their hairstyles mm-hmm. or their clothing or anything else and the other thing you said that's really true i'm not commenting on the fact that you're 30 and you're old that's literally <laughs> no, insane she's okay. very young you're just okay. a tiny tiny baby well, i turned 31 in two days okay well happy you're, birthday happy Thanks. birthday but you are a baby <laughs> so um because if you're old, I don't know what that makes me. But, you know, in any case, you're as old as or young as you feel, truthfully. Exactly. And I think fashion is about what you look good in, what makes you look good, and what you feel confident in. Mm-hmm. If you are, you know, a, a, a geezer and you're wearing a really short skirt and you feel like a geezer, you're going to feel stupid and it's not going to work for you. But if you feel good in it, and I wear like, I wear, I went to this dinner in England in this crazy, <laughs> and the hostess came up to me and I was wearing this long blazer with little shorts under it but black you know yeah. thick tights mm-hmm. and she was she quietly just like opened my jacket and I said come on Georgia did you think I was going to come to your party with no pants on but you know like the fact that I had shorts on that most people my age would not wear that but to me it works for me so I'm okay with it but I just the rule for me is if I feel comfortable yeah. if I feel uncomfortable then I don't go there that's I, all like, it is. learned my lesson with that. I feel like one of the first like on camera like press things I did a couple years ago, I like was like, oh, I need to wear like, I don't know, like I freaked out about my outfit and didn't wear something that felt me. And I felt so uncomfortable the yeah. whole time. So I was like, anytime I do anything else like this, I am just going to dress 100% like me, which like a lot of the times what I'm comfortable in is like jeans, a hot tank top, a hot leather jacket, like just that is my vibe. Mm-hmm. And I don't need to make it any more intricate. But yeah, if you feel comfortable and confident, it shines through so much. And then other people really feel that energy. Yeah, the authenticity. I, I love the wave of authenticity that's on the internet now. Like that, like we're all just drawn to people being themselves. Yeah. Gorgeous, beautiful. Well, Themselves little- with just a little pop of glamour. Yes. Just a little extra, extra something. <laughs> 
I mean, always extra. I'm always telling my followers I'm sending you shimmies. That's my thing. I'm always sending shimmies like to bring you good vibes, to bring you good energy, like harness the shimmies within you. Harness the shimmy. And carry them throughout your day. And then like, even if someone's being mean, you just shimmy, shimmy shake off. away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Okay, well, before we wrap it up, I want you to tell us about your book, plug anything, what's happening. Oh my god! I feel like you're on fire right now. Like you're doing a million different things. Yeah, it's, yeah, it is definitely a lot. I spent this whole entire year writing my first book, which is coming out next year. It's Second Chances. It's going to be the ultimate guide to thrifting, estate sale shopping, literally the doesn't exist yet ultimate guide to the secondhand shopping universe with very much so like my voice, my story, like in between the pages. Like, I feel like when you read it and my sister said the same when she read it, like it sounds like me talking and having a conversation. It's such a dream. I always knew like I wanted to make kind of like reinvent the fashion entertainment industry because it's been so like bore snore dead since like what not to wear look for less days. But those also had such a toxic spin on them of like, we're going to break you down and make you feel like crap about yourself before we build you back up <laughs> with like random clothes from a fa like a anthropology or something. And for me, I'm like, no, I think we can do that with out making people feel like shit about themselves and we can st and we can teach them how to thrift for themselves which is what most people can afford in this country and just like really like throwing the fashion entertainment industry on its head so i was like really working um when i like first started tiktok like my mind like my end game was like i want to make a tv show out of this and then the book like kind of fell into my lap and my editor reached out to my team and was like would macy ever want to do this i had to write a book proposal which i had never done before like the first chapter in the table of contents and the introduction and i just sat and i did it i was so nervous because it felt so right like i devoured fashion books growing up and it felt so right for this to fall into my lap and i love writing you know i write like scripts for my videos and stuff but i had a lot of imposter syndrome of like i have so many friends that write for like fashion publications and is there totally their job and like what am I gonna do like I make videos online and I wrote a whole book in the past year and That's we've wild. been shooting it recently and it's just like so exciting like I literally I just I don't know it's a dream come true I feel so grateful and I I I want to say I can't believe that it came through thrifting and it's about thrifting, but I can because like I always knew like even when people were making fun of me for it, that like what I was doing was a superpower. I'm telling you, like the day that I got accepted to Teen Vogue Fashion University from photos that were in fully thrifted clothing in our basement, I just like knew there was something special there. I knew there was a superpower there. And even like a year ago, I was meeting with a different round of kind of like TV execs than I am now. And even a year ago, they were all telling me like, you're too early. You're too early. People aren't ready for this. People aren't ready for this. Well, now people are very much so ready, especially now mm -hmm. that Simon & Schuster has signed off on it. Everyone's like waking up. They're like, oh, maybe, maybe this is a thing. <laughs> and it's just been amazing to watch. I know there's like a lot of people, especially online, I'm sure you've seen that are like, oh, too many people are thrifting now. Like it's ruining thrifting. I hate and that And it makes narrative. me so angry. Because I'm in the comment section it, arguing no, with people too. about that. I really am. Because it just, it, there's like, so much out there. There's why? so much out there. Why are we telling people to not thrift because there's not going to be enough for other people who can't afford it? It makes no sense. The no, logic is not there. It's not there. And like, honestly, outside of the internet, like a lot of, like not enough people are thrifting. Mm -hmm. Like in there, a universe of like fashion, TikTok, fashion, YouTube, what fashion, Instagram, like it looks like, you even know, Even a like, lot of the stuff at up, thrift stores end up in landfills Lambo's still. Yeah, exactly. Like at, at Goodwill's, like at, you know, the big thrift stores, like those are still going to landfill. So why yeah. are we telling people not to shop secondhand because there's not going to be enough to go around? It's just like a weird It's mentality. people like the scarcity of it, that mindset is like so detrimental to your thrifting experience you have to like know that like the good things that are meant for you will find you and i so wholeheartedly believe that like if i am not meant to find the find like if it was not meant to be with me like it will happen another time it will happen another way exactly if the shoes are not your <laughs> size them. please put them back because you won't be able to squeeze your foot into them and then you'll just be more sad that you got them and you're just staring at beautiful <laughs> shoes you there. can't wear <laughs> and it's just feet. I have very small feet. I fit oh, into most shoes. You can have the cowboy boots I can, that yeah, I thrifted that are too small yeah. <laughs> And it's just, yeah, it's been really crazy. I cannot wait for it to come out next I'm year. I'm so like, excited. I, I, oh, we're I, so happy for you. That oh, is amazing. I can't wait to see it and read it. It's amazing. I mean, there's multiple juicy pieces photographed in the book. Yay. So. Oh my gosh. So Yay. exciting. Obviously. That is exciting. Congratulations. Thank it's you. incredible. It's incredible. Your whole story is incredible. I it's, mean, I feel like it's just like I it's really crazy right now to be in this moment because 
just my whole life, like I was like laughed at for saying like, I'm going to do all of these things. And like, especially in Ohio, like a lot of people don't leave our town. Like a lot of people really, really go with like, we're going to go to college and we're going to graduate and we're going to get this job. And like, that's what we're going to do. And we're going to have a family. And like, I just, I mean, luckily had my mom yelling in my ear. Like she was the one person telling me like, you can do it. Like you are like, you are special. I mean, like all moms think that, but like my mom was really like, She's like no, you really I think are. she saw in me, like even like applying for things like that Teen Vogue program. I like, anchored the morning news. I was on the announcements every day. I like made the fashion section of our magazine in high school, like created it. And I think she just knew that I had that drive. I think for me, I was like, everything's crap now. Like I can make things better. Like things will get better. And like, I really held on to that for so long. And it is really wild to be like living in this moment now, meeting people like you guys and like connecting with people that I feel like the universe is bringing into my life. And the fact that it's through clothing is really great. I think clothing is, like I said, the most amazing vessel for storytelling. It you, it just, it gives people so much and it brightens people's days so much. And ugh, I just love it. So Me exciting. too. I love clothes too. too. I love yeah, it. We love I love stuff. your st- and I love your story. I love the way you talk about your mom. I love that you're doing this with your sister. Yeah. I mean, that's incredible. It's the best. I it's love like- having her. Like I remember the day I left for LA like years ago and we were obviously like bawling our eyes out because we have always just been so close, best friends. And I told her I was like I'm laying the groundwork and then I'm bringing you out here. And the fact that like it lined up that she graduated college right when I got my book deal and right when I was like okay, enough money is coming in to get your booty out here she came and moved in with me and my boyfriend and my dog and we all live together and amazing. we're just a little modern family. family yeah <laughs> that's so it's fun. amazing it's so it's fun. really great okay well i have a little game that we're gonna oh, play God, let's do it so as we all have seen juicy has been through many iterations many owners lots of collaborations so i want to go through some of the juicy collabs yeah the good the bad the mayo okay the mayo <laughs> i did not know about until i looked up last night <laughs> Oh my, I, I, I saw it. I saw influencers posting about it and I didn't believe that it was real. And I was scared to show Gila. I was like, oh my I just, God. Yeah, I had no idea. <laughs> so bad. That was so one I had bad. no idea about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, we'll start off with some better ones. Okay, so Aries did a collab. We got some great, great images. You know, lots of rhinestones. I liked this one. I think you liked no, this I one think, No, I think Aries did a good job because I think they took what's iconically juicy and then they made it their own. They put it into their brand in a way that made sense for their brand that wasn't insulting to juicy and it wasn't like cheesy or whatever. I think they did a good job. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, wait, flip up to that that or the one that was below that. Yeah, that's what I like too. I like that it's very them. It's not just like we made a tracksuit, we put whatever our logo right. is on it in rhinestones and like called it a juicy time. Yeah, and that, there's so many collabs now too. Yeah. I feel like it's done right. Like they, they we, their yeah, own that's story cute. into it, right? I would wear it. That's cute. Super cute. Okay, we love you, Eric. So that's a slay. Slay. <laughs> Vet Ma, obviously. Oh my God. I, so I we have uh, amazing. The Runway and Rihanna. Yeah. Amazing. I, I mean, mean, dead. Dead. And then The Runway, Kylie Jenner. It was so good. I was working out in the gym and Hamish Bowles, who's a really good friend mm. of mine, called me up and he was sitting Iconic. at the show. And he said, you are going to die. And I just started screaming. I left my Pilates and I went and looked at it. I mean, oh my God. Yeah, definitely one of the more iconic I love the run. I love that red look. Right? Oh, that so red good. look is super, super bitchy. So I love good. it. So good. And they styled it so well. So good. Okay, the Ganny Club, more recently. Got some purple tracks. It wasn't, it didn't move the needle at all. It wasn't yeah, insulting. They put, they it put just, Ganny on the sweatshirt. It just on feels the very like, like I was saying, just like juicy on a track suit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like yeah. it's not, yeah. I'm not like mad at it. It's not like bad, but it's definitely, I'm not seeing like their brand pumping through it and like adding that extra like them flair to yeah, it. I agree. Well said, Macy. I agree. Perfect. I also want to tell you, can you imagine me and Pam 25 years ago walking into like big offices? Like people thought we were crazy. It's kind we, of how I feel sometimes right? these days going into agencies oh my and stuff. God, I'm just they like, thought we were crazy. I remember walking on the floor and, and everybody on, on the corporate floor was so quiet and we are the loudest people. So are we. we. Ever met. <laughs> so loud. And they were always like, shh. And every time they would tell us to be quiet, we would get You're like, louder. Yeah. It was like insane. It was so good. I feel like that's a good message. Yeah. When they tell you to be quiet, get louder. We got louder and we just were ourselves and we did play dumb. I do have to say that because they would always talk to us in this crazy lingo that they thought we didn't understand, but we did understand, but we just kind mm-hmm. of pretended that we didn't understand. And we'd be like, 
don't know what you're talking about. This is the way it's going to go. I kind of love yeah. that though. Like let people underestimate you. Like, oh, like, yeah. let, like it's like just prove them wrong. Yeah, yeah, we did. Like let them think you're done. Like, I'm not. Okay, we're you. getting ready for the real. Okay. Yeah. The craft mayo. I mean, when all. I saw this last time you sent it to me, I thought it was mac and cheese at first. And then I was like, okay, no mayo. Yeah. I, I wouldn't have been that upset at some juicy mac and cheese. I've I could get on board But I've with seen that. some scary mac and cheese craft collabs <laughs> recently. Like sometimes when like food and fashion meet, like it can be really great. And then sometimes it can be like a very scary. Do yeah. you know that we have this idea? The long live velvety. I <laughs> the, the, the smooth on the butt. I can't. Like, it reminds me of smooth move poop tea. Yes. That's oh. what me and my sister think of. If you have smooth on the ass, like it's like, what are we? We yeah. doing. It's a little like uh, like the mayo couture tube top. I just I just don't uh, know about that, and I don't know how I didn't see this anywhere online. Like that must have been like <laughs> some like right hell. some like legit influencers were posting about it, and I was just like, wow. I will say I like obviously the recreation of this. Like I like obviously yeah, the I recreation can see of this where photo. They were it's going. Not, but it's not yeah. fully being executed. Yeah, I don't even know if it just didn't need to be executed. I it just didn't. Think it, it just didn't need to be executed. We didn't, executed. Need, it. We didn't no. need it. No, it did not no. need it. We're gonna go no. We did have a food idea, Pam and I, and we went to Nebraska, which was unbelievable. We had a four course meal served to us at Conagra, which is this food company, by chefs serving us like bird's eye frozen dinners. Like we couldn't look at each other because we knew that if we looked at each other, we would, just we would die. lose it. We would, die. we would just <laughs> lose it. But we had this whole idea. It was called um, Let Them Eat Couture. And so it was frozen food from our favorite restaurants with like fancy pink and gold silverware. See, that See, that's sounds fabulous. fabulous. That's it the was so good. See, that's it what it needs so, to be. No, it was yeah. really good, yeah. That's, see, that's so much better <laughs> than like a commercialized food brand. Like I just sometimes think that makes it skew on like a just side that is not yeah. the yeah. right kind of tacky side. Yeah, you know, like there, there's the good exactly, tacky and the bad tacky. Exactly. And, like, that can there just is. skew. I don't know. It just makes me think there weren't like minds in the room that like no, were so no. obsessed. Yeah, the yeah. girlies were not in that boardroom. No. Okay, Forever 21. I'm not mad at Forever 21. I liked the the photos, you know, it's Forever 21, but I just, I, well, I worked at Forever 21 in high school. That was like, we had like no other stores in the Dayton Mall by my house. So I would like go to Forever 21, get fashion inspo and go thrift it. Um, but like, yeah, I'm just not a big Forever 21 fan these days. So, yeah. you know, it's the just like, it's just it fast all. fashion. And yeah. I just feel like it's just, I would rather... Like the girls just go to Poshmark or eBay and get their juicy on. They're yeah, like getting does, Forever 21 manufactured juicy. It, it does look like OG juicy. Like, I mean, not as good, obviously, but it's like the same style. So it's like you may as well just thrift it. Yeah. So I'm not like you were saying about like the uh, Ganny collab. It's kind of like it just isn't pushing it anywhere else. And yeah. for me, like a collab, like you said, with them being there's so many collabs, like I need it to like give me something that is the voice something of that new. brand. But with Forever 21, since they're like that kind of fast fashion company, like they don't really have a voice of their own. They kind of yeah. just like make what other designers are making cheaper. So I, I, even... I, I appreciate like the size inclusivity of, yeah. of what they did. And like they kind of like, you know, I, they're trying. <laughs> we'll give them a little bit of points. Okay, Kappa. I forgot about this collab. <laughs> yeah, I need to see this because okay. I don't... Th we the went. Nicole Richie of it all. Okay. Or sorry, not Nicole. <laughs> Sophia. Sophia Richie Grange now, but like before. Yeah, this she is like was, younger days. Exactly. Yeah. This is like before she like really popped off. But like now, like I could. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like this is a, a great photo shoot. Yeah. I love the photos. I love the Obsessed, photos. Right? Amazing. Yeah. I, don't, yeah. I like the photos. Yeah. They're the giving photos, like the, juicy glam exactly. vibes. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. The clothing itself. We went to the. We went. Yeah. yeah. It was. Yeah. When was, when was this? Three years, three, ago. Yeah, three years ago, I think three I years ago. Yeah, right. That's really good. So good, so good. Okay, have you been to Michael's Crafts recently? Oh, n not recently, but we. I know this. I know these. <laughs> <laughs> Lexi, my sister, and I looked these up the last night, and she was like, "Oh my god, the bracelet." Yes, yeah. I. I was at Michael's for something else, and I saw this, and I was like, "Oh my god, I have to get it." So we were making bracelets in the office, having having a fun time. I think it's cute. Why not? It's fine. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> I think it's fine. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the vet mom was the best yes. so far. The vet yes. mom was really I mean, epic. 10 out of 10. Really yeah. epic. I mean, this good. one though, actually. Oh, this one's good. This one's really good. The yeah. Stony yeah, Clover no. Lane. Yeah. They do like all yeah. of the like bag accessory things. I thought this was so cute. Yeah, that's giving you have juice. I have, right? so, I have a friend that sent me a lot of that and yeah. we bought some of it. I loved it. I yeah. thought it was great. I feel like I'm going to need this giant yeah. tote bag. Like, I feel like if really I was cute. doing a juicy collab and I didn't get your stamp of approval, I would be like, 
Sure. What are we doing? No, literally. This stuff too. Also, like we have one of these on the table here. Yeah. Like the it looks like yeah. OG juicy, but it's kind of like what they do. So I don't know. No, I think yeah. it's good. Yeah. I think it's cute because like it is their brand. Yeah, like, exactly. It's very their brand, yes. but like meshing it with juicy really yeah. naturally. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. The parade club. Oh my gosh. That yeah. you mentioned. I was sent this. Yeah. yeah. I have the Swarovski crystal juicy on the butt underwear. I just here like- with me. <laughs> I like that you turned it into a top. That's yeah, that's, because that's I was like, it. "Well, who's gonna see it under my pants?" That's like, I want it on me. Also, like, I feel like I'm hiding be, these crystals under my pants. I feel like you'd see the crystals. Like I'm, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I'm just like it's it's not the most no, it made no wearable. Sense. Yeah, but I like that you turned it into a top. That's cute. But you yeah, know, no, I for have like a, for like a photo like this, I feel like is the only way that you really could use. Yeah. That, the photos you know? in a lot of them are good and they tell the story of two best friends yeah. and girls mm-hmm. and all. I like the paparazzi yeah. of it all. You can see the, yeah. yeah. And on the yeah. scarf they did, which I also have with me, they did the like very, the spray paint Viva La Juicy oh, like font. So like that felt very natural and like organic and cool to me. We also have like, they did like a little black, it was like a vel- a velour like pouch that they did that said Juicy on it. And my sister literally uses that every day. So Love like- that. I mean, there's, I, okay. I just would have preferred like maybe like something where, yeah, I could show the juicy, like I yeah. want the writing on my butt. Exactly. <laughs> so like, on, I on pants. pants. Yeah. yeah. Or shorts maybe. Yeah. yeah. Like a little boy short. Oh, like a little booty short yeah. with it on it. That yeah. would have been good. Yeah. Okay. I really like this one and the pictures are really good. The MEJ collab. I wear oh my, my yes. I wear my MEJ clip all the time. Yeah. Their clips are and amazing. And I love the photos that they did because you can tell so clearly what their vision board looked like and yeah. they had like the juicy fragrance photos. Yeah. Yeah. It's giving like the glam juicy vibes. Yes. Yeah. yeah, very. I love them. Like the it's bow. Cute. Yeah. yeah, I loved this one. Oh yeah, so I love good. those photos. I have the black juicy clip. I use it all the time. I think you gave it to me. I did. It's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have the one that says fuck off on it. I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely do. Yeah. And yeah, those are, you know, the good, the bad, the mayo. Thank you for playing. The the mayo. <laughs> the good, the bad, I mean, the I didn't mayo. know about the mayo. I don't know if we needed to know about the mayo. Yeah. Uh, it's the yeah. smooth is too much. It's too much. It's so horrible. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Seriously, this has been such a fun content. You are day. absolutely fucking amazing. Thank you. And good luck with everything. I mean, the book is gonna kill it. Big big. Your TV fans. show is gonna kill it. Your sister's gonna have a really good time with you. Yeah. It's all it's all incredible and you're living your dream and you're doing what you set out to do and you're talking about you know your your dark times too which is really going to be inspiring for a lot of people out there that are going through that. I mean listening to you guys talk about TikTok and all that's like oh I'm trying to get into TikTok I do go down rabbit holes especially when I'm on the road and I started yeah. work. someone said to me I oh, know you got to try Cap cut. Oh my oh god, my she discovered cap cut. I like your green screen videos. You do like talking about outfits and stuff. <laughs> yeah. I like those. Those yeah. are lovely really green screen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's like it's another world, but it's great. I love it. And it's amazing. Because it brings connection it like does. this together. Yeah. Like totally. if you would have told teenage me like this and the book, it's all too much. Like literally, this is the best start to my birthday week ever. Yay. Literally the best. Seriously, happy birthday. Happy oh, birthday. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you for having me. Thank you. Thank happy you. You'll have to come back. I mean, this is my new favorite podcast. Uh, so like, well, every, everybody you're needs to know. Back. It's decided. <laughs> so amazing. Really great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yay. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>